Morning. Welcome back to another episode of Ali's Digger Diary. I'm out West Cumbria today and I need to get that machine there. Because it's due a 1,000 hour service. Um, I, the last time I was here, it was just a bog. Uh, it was just before I had my appendix out because the 225 over there, uh, it got bad fuel through the fuel system and knackered all the injectors. Um, bit of a conspiracy, but maybe the locals didn't want a new housing development here. Or whether it was just the dregs of a fuel bowser. But anyway, I ended up pulling all the injectors out of it. And then that weekend I ended up in hospital. So I never got back to it, but my colleague has done a grand job of getting it back together because it's digging, dig, dig, digging now. Anyway, I'm hoping this won't take long because I want to get back through to Carlisle and get me uh, PDIs finished. I do. I think we're on one of the firmest spots on this building site. There's a bit of tarmac down here, which is good to see. Anyway, I'm doing a thousand hour service. We've got up to 9,000 hours now. Um, I've looked after this machine from new and it's doing all right. It's hardly ill the thing. So I've got these three filters in here to do. I've got a pilot filter in this door here. The operator's doing the two cab filters and I've got a hydraulic return filter to do. Um, I'll keep it brief because I don't want this to be the main feature of the video. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, I've got a few more services and jobs like that to do. Um, I've got another service to do tomorrow as well on a shovel. I'll try and keep the service in to a minimum in this video. Right, just been doing some quick maths. So I've serviced this machine from new, it's on 9,000 hours now. So I'll have changed this filter, that filter and that filter uh, 18 times, or this is the 18th time that I've changed it. And it'll have had over 250, oh, around 250 litres of engine oil in its life. That in it. Imagine if I totted up all the machines that I service regularly from new. Not including the ones that I just do. Some folk do a 500 hour service and now go and do a 1000 hour service, etc. Be mad, won't it, to know how much oil I've got through just since I've been at Gordon's. How many filters I'll have changed. Hmm. Right, I need to stop this from making a mess now. 10 to 11, sun's just come out. Everybody's back to work. I'm going to get out of here before there's a bloomin' uh, another tipper wagon come because I've just been penned in for five minutes. Go time. Um, just on my way back through from that 140 and uh, called into that six tonner there. I'm with the mechanic that works for them. Uh, we've just done a regen on it because it was giving a bit of bother. Right, back through to the yard, it is two o'clock. I would have liked to, well, I was going to be back if I hadn't called into this. I would have been back for lunchtime. Speaking of which, I am hungry. And that's the contents of my bait box today. It's, uh, it's not good like. Still got all that waste oil to get rid of, but that's not urgent. In there is job for next week and that massive oh it came with a stock order that's why I was thinking what a huge box to send another box in but um this box will have been filled with filters as well we've got it on a stock order that is a slew motor for a dx 225 which we're going to do next week uh, so that'll be a good little video doing that I've got that hydraulic pump that I want to do on Monday if uh, if I get 
me yard work done. First job. Remove that plastic cover around there uh, so I can get a wire fed in. And I wonder if. Du, du, du. Yeah, I think I just lift this up out of the way and maybe with my welding wire I can just feed it down through the back of here that'll save me taking that off and that off and that off <sighs> let's have a go shall we oh actually it's got a different type of different type of buckle as well look watch out uh, I think I need to go and get the other the other kit the other box because this one's the other type Mm, not a box. This box. Yeah, that's not the right one for this one. <laughs> Nearly. That's the type I want. Okay, let's get that bit off. Cab disassembled. I want to run a wire, ideally without taking this off, down there, I've taken the radio out because it doesn't take much. Um, so I can try and encourage the bit of, you know, I can get my arm up into here, I can maybe try and encourage it a bit. That's the idea anyway, right, go and find the welding wire. Right, there's me, where's it gone? Here. That's my welding wire there, and it's still sticking out the roof, good. Um, I'm not going to lie, that wasn't as easy as the 8.5 tonner yesterday. 8.5 tonner, I had that done in 60 seconds. I got halfway through persevering with that wire and I thought I would have just been quicker pulling all the panels off. But then you think, oh, but now it's going to take me longer. So you persevere and persevere and persevere, and yeah. Twink heart wire. Right. Stick this on the roof, stick this to the wire. I'll probably have to feed it through a bit from out here first. Guess what? <laughs> The welding wire disconnected from the wire that I'm trying to feed in. Yay! So all is not lost because it pulled off about there and I think I can feel it in here somewhere. It's a lucky dip. Oh, it was there, where's it gone? I swear it was there. So I thought, right, I'll go and feed some in so there's some slack in the roof lining. Where's it gone? Oh, it's a way back here. Yeah, I can see it, look. Whee! There we go. Look at all that. <sighs> and the wire's still here. That was the difficult bit, getting it from here down to here. So all isn't lost yet. Ha! I'm showing this who's boss today. Right, I'll put this radio out my way because I'm just going to keep knocking my head off that when I'm in this area. I'll do the same as what I did with the 85. Take a piggyback off the 12 volt charge point. And there's a USB one next door as well, look. So many outlets for charging stuff. Okay. Right, it's just after five o'clock and my latest video has just uploaded. There's already a few comments popping up. Um, in the previous video to that, I've got a load of comments to respond to and read. I've just not had a chance. Anyway, what I'm telling you is the wire is run out from behind there. I didn't need to drill any holes in the dash. That's a bonus. It's still on the reel there till I've decided how long I want it to be. Um, it was the yellow and red wire on the last seat belt, but this is a different brand. So I need to determine which one it is. 
I'm gonna say black and red, that's my guess. What's your guess? Put it in the comments and then by then it'd be too late and I'll suspect you all for cheating because you all get it right. Right, what have we got here? Red, it's gotta be red and blue or red and black. Right, red and black is permanently shut. So red and blue, if I click that in, we should hear red and blue beep. I'm guessing. Red and... Eh! Can't believe it. Not them two. Black and blue, never do. There you go. So my seatbelt's clicked in, my green beacon's buzzing. Ah, there we go. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I bet you weren't either. Now let's get a Deutsch plug shoved on the end of there. Uh, I'll do these ones because they're fiddlier. Easy to do on my workbench rather than from behind the seat. One of them, one of them. Um, there should be some pins in there. Okay, what I need to do now is make the plug. Don't strip a bit of wire off. Not that much. Same there. And there. Get these ends in. Twist it up maybe. special crimping tool. One. Push that all the way in. Two. Lovely. Get the plug. What I do is I peel the rubber bit out like that. Put that in there like that. It doesn't matter which pin goes to which for this one. Normally I put red in number one. You can see how it's got numbers on it here. Pin one and pin two. Normally, as a rule, I go red pin one, black pin two. Red being live and whatever colour the way is being earth. Right, that's that. Now, finish it off. Undo it. Undo it. There's a fiddle, that's all I've got. There we go. Let me get that shoved in there, look. That's it. Probably should have put the conduit on first, but never mind. I'll do it to like that and then I'll probably chop it about there. See if I can use these things, I've got my side cutters in my pocket. I'm gonna cut it. There. That's it. Right, plug him into there. And that is... Oh, I've got my gloves stuck. Nice job. Okay, the roof. Drilled that out to 10 mil. What I'm gonna do is mount this between the light and this bracket in here. And that's gonna hold the green beacon. Capiche? Right, I've got my lid back on. I've got my light installed underneath the beacon bracket. Um, there was a fair, well I say there was a fair bit, there was about six or seven inches excess wire which I fed back in the way so that's the uh, that's the length that I need because I'm going to get a bit of conduit on there it's probably going to sit about there like that, maybe a bit higher, I can always feed it back in the way um, so I just need to strip the wire, a couple of spade connectors, bosh alright I'm nearly there, question, why did they make the bolt 13mm head 
and the nut. 14. Why do they do it? Just irritating. Irritating. They do it because they think that folk using their products must only have one set of spanners. And so therefore, with one set of spanners, you can tighten it up. I mean, that one's a 13, look. That side's a 13. Right, uh, a bit of conduit to go from there and loop it round to there. Smashing. Go and get the beacon. Do that up. Now then, keys to the machine. Are they in the van? I'll tighten that up in a minute when I've got two hands. Uh, keys. Keys. Chances this is going to work. Here a fuse go bing. Where's the belt gone? There we go. Keep that seat cover on while I'm in and out of here. Slide the seat back. Get all that rubbish out of there. Right. Is the green beacon working? Da dum da dum 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 dum. Yay! Right, that's the worst bit done. What time are we on? <gasps> 20 to 6. Oh, I have had a missed call. I was say, normally, we, normally, me, uh, normally my wife phones me at 5 o'clock to see how I'm getting on, making sure I'm still alive. What time do you think you'll be home for tea? Do I need to leave the oven on and put the tea in the oven? <laughs> Keep it warm? I just haven't heard my phone for some reason. Right. What I'll do is, I'll go around it with a grease gun. Because that'll take five minutes. In fact, I can check the levels now, can't I? Because it's been stretched out. So, Open this door. <sighs> Need some hydraulic oil in it. Engine oil. Actually, bang on. Coolant's okay. Um, Oh good, it's got the level points in the middle of the gear, in the middle of the final drive. So I'll do that. That's bang on that one. I see there's plenty in that one too. It'd be the one time that I don't check the uh, final drives would be the one time that it goes up and the final drive comes to a crunch. I remember at my old spot when I was younger, before any machine left the workshop, the salesman would come in and go around all the grease nipples, make sure it looked like you'd greased them. When you take the bung out to check the level, you damage the paint slightly, so you check all the bungs you just double check everything you did because he didn't want the phone call from the customer saying oh this machine hasn't been checked over look it hasn't done this and it hasn't got that and it hasn't got that so you'd always double check it before it went out which at the time you thought this guy doesn't trust me but i can understand what he means or why he did it if you know what i mean he doesn't want the aggro and there were people that would just <laughs> go around it put, plug the grease gun on and then unplug it again uh, just so it looked like it had been greased but you've gone to the effort of plugging the grease gun on why wouldn't you just grease it oh there's my phone ringing I can hear it now 
Oh, do you? Right, let's go and have a crack. Okay, it's six o'clock. Um, what have I got left to do to it? Top up the hydraulic oil, fit quick release couplings on the hammer lines because his current digger doesn't have rotate lines, so I don't think he'll use them or need them. I don't think. I'll maybe speak to the salesman. These lines won't kicked in a little bit as well. Um, yeah, hydraulic oil, and then set the dash up, give it a wash off. An hour in, an hour tomorrow. I was going to say an hour in the morning, but I'm going to go and load up now for um, servicing a loading shovel tomorrow. Got that big metal pipe to fit on that 300. Yeah, uh, I think it's a thousand hour service. All right, so I'll see you. Just been checking my box of filters, to make sure I've got everything and. The uh, centrifugal spinner filter paper was missing. Um, I haven't fully read the comment, but there was a comment asking what was the part number for this. There it is. Hope that gave you time to screenshot it or write it down on a bit of paper. That'll be a scan your part number, that, not a, not a Doosan part number. So hopefully that helps you out. Right, fun time. Morning. It's Friday. Woohoo! Bank holiday Friday, no less. Here we are. I did that one last weekend. I've got that one to do today. Um, I'm going to park at the back of it. Am I? Yes, there's plenty of room for wagons to get in and out if they need to. So, uh, the sun's shining. I think, from what my wife said, it's going to be sunny till after lunch. Which is good. I'll be able to get this service by then. Um, after that, I've got a pump, to f uh, pump feed hose to fit on the 300 down in the bottom. Um, and all three machines need dash updates, gauge panel updates. So got those to do as well so I should be done in here I'm hoping to be done in here by two o'clock it is five minutes past nine now let's see how we get on shall we driver's got a hell of a taste in music hasn't he <laughs> uh, right what I'm gonna do obviously I'm doing a thousand hour service on this which is the same service that I did on um, that shovel at the start of the week so I'll just I'll just set a time lapse up of me whizzing round it and then because if you want to see me servicing one of these because I've done it so recently um, I'll not make a 10 minute section of the video into servicing this it's done 4968 hours so just a quick run through as to what all's to do we have got the two air conditioning filters, centrifugal oil cleaner. Now, on the old shovels, which is I'm still stuck in the way of the Dash 5s, it was to do every 1,000 hours. But on these shovels, it's to do every 2,000 hours. So I don't need to do that. Um, add blue filter, transmission, no, it doesn't need doing. That's 2,000 hours as well. Engine oil filter. Pilot filter, return filter, and fuel fillers. So I would describe it as a medium service. Not a big deal. Um, so obviously I changed that centrifugal oil cleaner filter on that 420 earlier in the week. And I thought, it's not, my uh, me parts man doesn't normally forget to put stuff in and the filter paper wasn't in it. Um, 
And obviously he's looked at the service schedule before he's booked all the parts out. So that's me just stuck in my ways from when I used to service the Dash 5. Because that was definitely every 500 hours. Anyway, I don't need to do that today. Which makes this a lot quicker. Because as you've seen, I put one in yesterday because there was one missing. That's why. Because I don't actually need to do it. Hmm. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll batter, batter through this, should I? So that is the shovel serviced. I've just been having a cup of coffee there and um, reading through a couple of comments, just sort of scan reading them. The general consensus in the comments is pretty 50 50 about uh, the servicing content. Some of you are sort of saying that it's just a true reflection on sort of what it's like to be a plant mechanic um, at the end of the day it's just these videos are sort of documenting a day in the life of a plant mechanic so it's not all uh, breakdowns and engines blowing up and pipes bursting and electrical faults I would say 60% of it is servicing uh, and I don't really mind those odds to be fair <laughs> Um some of you want to see more of the machines, whether that's in more detail as to kind of like that, or whether it's more seeing the machines working and what they get up to. I could certainly do a bit more of that, um, to be fair, because if you've been watching the channel for a while, not all my machines are in their normal habit habitat, like on building sites and things like that. Um, in fact, very few are on building sites, aren't they? Digging foundations. A lot of them sort of different jobs in the forestry, which I suppose some of you further down south don't see. So, um, yeah, I'll certainly make an effort to get some footage of, more footage of machines working sort of before and after uh, I've done any work on them. Um, and we've also got Scott Plant coming up soon. Uh, that's next month. I'll be up there for the two days, uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, 
so I'll certainly be doing a video while I'm up there showing you around the machines that we have on the stand um, so yeah hopefully I appreciate all the feedback is what I'm trying to say feedback is good because I want to make videos that you lot want to watch and um, it's not a bad thing to just make some adjustments here and there so thank you for commenting and getting in touch right I'm going to fire this thing up I'm going to do the gauge panel update and that'll be that reset the service lights check the pressures I'll just pack all my gear away a bit first and then we'll go down at the bottom and we'll do a bit of work on a 30 ton, of, 30 ton dig dig right after doing this gauge panel update on Monday I should be able to do it right today so put the memory stick in turn the ignition on that should boot up a different page yeah see remember what I said it's like an old-fashioned screen that you get on Windows 78 or something not 78 98 it is isn't it so then we got a bootloader then we got a, what was it hmm can't remember hard disk no my document oh no no that one is it that one okay nope how do you go back bootloader hard disk okay bootloader okay should download that's it it is as easy as that gauge panel update on that one's done let's go down into the big hole Okay, I've got this machine manoeuvred into position for working on. Job of this machine these days is to dig out of that heap, load it into that hopper, which crushes it, and then it goes into the second crusher, which crushes it again, and then goes through the screener, which puts it into one, two, three, four different piles of different sized stone. So it's a fair operation. It is. So it's this pipe that we're changing. This pipe feeds hydraulic oil from the tank here and up into the pump here. Um, so that is the job now. The reason we're replacing it is about two months ago, the world round here split. Um, we were in a bit of a pinch because couldn't get one of these for a week um, and obviously without this machine there is no stone production so the decision was taken to remove it weld it up um, which to be fair it still doesn't look like it's leaking um, and replace that pipe once uh, you know when the time is more in our favour and it isn't needed to do this job. So first job I need to do remove this pull the suction filter out and blank it so when I put it back in the only oil we lose is the oil that's in this bit of pipe here and maybe a bit of what's in the pump as well. Then after that it's just two, du two jubilee clips two pipes four allen bolts we're done. I'll have to remove this belly plate as well though. Another quick point. Um, why haven't I got the arms stretched all the way out? I don't really want as much oil in the tank as possible. Just in case something does happen. And I don't stop the oil flow. It should be okay like, but just in case. Then uh, I've not lost what's in all those rams there. You know what I mean? So we've got our bag on, or 
two black bin lines in this case because they're quite thin. Normally I like a, a nice good quality bag for life but uh, this will just have to do with what I've got. Um, so next what I'll do is I'll make sure that there's a cavity under it so when it sits down at the suction pipe I'm not just going to pierce a perfect circle into my bags. So there we go, that should be the tank capped off. Just leaving the van running because the battery was, it was coming up on the dash when I got into it after the service that the battery was getting low so charge that up a bit. So the next job is get a 41 mil spanner, take one of these pipes off, it doesn't matter which. This pipe here is feeding the rotate pump, which is here, and this pipe here is feeding the pilot pump here, all from the same thing. Um, so what I'll do, I'll probably just grab that one, I think that one's 36 actually and run that into to be fair i can run it into this one this is empty and it's just had clean oil in it so if the oil goes in clean then i'll put it back into the machine so i'm draining the oil out the pump and the pipe now while that's doing that i need to remove these p clips that are attached to the pipe that i'm going to change Um, and with a bit of luck, in a couple of minutes time, that oil flow will have stopped. <laughs> I hope it does. Now using bags isn't ideal, but it works. You've just got to make sure that when you remove the bags, that you've got a complete, a complete bag. You would never believe how hard it has just rained on me. Look at me, I'm soaking. And look, sun's back out. I hope it stays for another half an hour while I finish this off. So I've got my four bolts out that mount the pipe to the pump. And a good bit of news is that oil flow is starting to slow down. So all that's left to do is loosen these Jubilee clips. Ah, start. Whew. So that's it, sort of on and in position. I'm just going to whiz these four bolts up and then it's in position to lock those Jubilee clips down. With a bit of luck, I can use my gun. I'll just do it like that and I'll tighten them up by hand so I know that they're all the same I'll get that last one in a sec once I've put you down right so what I've done is I've put new o-rings on these fittings here new o-ring up there as well 
So I've just got two pipes, two P-clips, take the bung out the tank and let the oil wash up into that pump now. Um, and then before I start it, I need to take a pipe off at the highest point, which is this one here. Crack that pipe off until there's oil flow through it. Um, and that tells me then that the oil has made it up through the pump so that when we start it, for whatever reason it airlocks, um, that pump isn't gonna run dry until it grabs a gulp of oil, by which point, It'll probably be too late and the damage will be done. Okay, now for the messy bit. Take this lid back off. And hopefully, we get two full black bin liners without chunks missing. That's the dream. When you pull this out of here, you'll be able to see it go glug, 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 glug. And that'd be all the oil rushing into the pump, hopefully. Whee! See? <laughs> so the oil's moving, which is good. Save that spring there from going in there. That'd be lovely, that, wouldn't it? Ugh, this is the clay bit now. Anyone that can do this without making a mess, every time I've got one of these jobs to do, I'll hire you. <laughs> There. there we go. Right, clip the cable ties and inspect the bags. Right, suction filters back in. Um, I did have a quick look at this off camera and everything is present and correct. Wonderful. So, I might just put some fresh oil in. Don't know, I just feel like when I've been messing about down there with the oil, Catching it, there's every chance when I've taken a P-clip off, there's a big glob of something gone into that funnel neck and poisoned me good oil. And I just don't want to risk it. You know what I mean? In the long run, probably a better idea. Well, finally, I've loosened this pipe now and I can see the oil starting to come out from between the gap there. It's a good thing. I'll lock that off. Uh, and we'll start it up. I'll show you what I'll do in a minute. Yeah, so what I was wanting to show you, um, but my phone battery died, is it's easier done with the key ignition when you're starting it and you've either replaced the pump or that pipe and you just want to, you just want to turn the engine over and stop it, turn the engine over and stop it, just to try and if there is any air, just kind of work it through without actually starting the machine. Um, so with these push button starts, you can push it to start and then click it three times quickly and it stops it from turning over. Um, but it is just easier on the ignition key, just um, and then you go back around to the pump bay, crack the pipe off and just make sure there's no air left in it. And then you can start it up. Anyway. I am just going to update the gauge panel in this and then we'll be finished. 1.41 is the time now. So my prediction of two o'clock was bang on. What we Bond died again. Anyway, I'm just squeezing out through these gates. Um, what am I now? Tent two. Happy days. And now we're back up the road to Carlisle, back up to the yard go and finish some diggers. Right, back at HQ, uh, not HQ, back at the yard. It is, what time is it, Al? 10 past three. I've <laughs> got all these boxes of jobs to do. My word. Anyway, I'm just ignoring them for the time being. Um, I've come in here, I've unloaded the van, by the way. I need some half-inch couplers. Female and a male. Make sure that's half inch because sometimes people put three eighths ones in here. Marvellous. I need two bonded seals, half inch bonded seals. I just like them. Yes, two of them. So, yeah, um, van's unloaded. I managed to get some, managed to get some filters away. So I've got a bit of space on the van. I'm going to put the rest of the afternoon in. I want to try and get that one over there done. 
as well as this 27 up the yard. Okay, so we're jumping back onto this 27 job. Uh, there's another job that I remembered last night uh, before I went to sleep, sadly. Um, I remember that I need to swap the uh, pump feed for the quick hitch so it works when you curl the bucket rather than draw the dipper arm in. So I'll we'll jump onto that in a sec. But first, I've just looked at the customer's machine that he's trading in. Looks like flat face coupling to me. On the right hand side is female, so presumably on the opposite side is the male. So to seal these, you need a bonded seal. Bonded seal, doughty washer, that goes onto there like that. And then because that end is tapered, the tighter you tighten that into the fitting, the better the seal is. That makes sense. So that is, that should be, I'm pretty, I'm like 95% confident that those 45, swept 45 are uh, BSP. I'm almost positive. So the reason why we can't just put that fit in straight onto here uh, with a bonded seal is because the shape of this fitting at the top here doesn't have a surface for the uh, bonded seal to seal again. So if I put that bonded seal onto there, there'd be bits of seal visible and that would mean that it would leak oil. Um, suppose we could put a male-male adapter in it and put it straight into, into this block here, but then it'd be pointing down the way. And if you had a hammer on it, it'd probably rub against here. So that's the idea behind that. For whatever reason, the fittings on here, they are half inch BSP and they're a BSP thread, but they're always, it's almost like, it feels like you're cross threading it because it's, it doesn't just run up finger tight and then nip it up with a spanner. It's always been the same. Don't know why, but anyway, that'll go on there like that. And then we'll probably undo that and just kick this out a bit so then the hammer pipe doesn't rub against here. Couplings are on. The, just to show you, I've just kicked this hammer pipe in slightly uh, in comparison to this side that's quite out there, just to keep it a bit neater. Um, if you're digging in among trees and branches or something, digging out a ditch, you don't want to hank this pipe. Keep hold of that. It's a good half inch cap that'll come in handy. Don't know what I did with the other one. Maybe I've already put oh, it's down here. So I'll just do the same to the other pipe now. Kick that in a bit, and then we'll uh, we'll take the cover off around the hydraulic pump. So this is the pipe that we need to move from this fit in here, which is P2, so or P1. Can't remember which way around it is, but this is the pipe that is uh, feeding the hydraulic hitch, which is why when you draw the dipper arm in the hitch unlocks instead of the bucket curling. So we need to move these fittings across to here and that one over to here. While we're in here, we did have one of these leaking on a DX27 not too long ago. So I'll just nip them up, make sure they're tight. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. So I need a 19 mil spanner, 27, 27, 27. 27s and 19s by the looks. There we are, so that's these fitting swapped over, but we've kept the pipes coming from the same place, if that makes sense. So the pump feeds haven't swapped on the valve chest, just the fittings, which will allow me to put this on. I'll get that set to about there. Put this on, this has got a little gauze filter in it. One of those things to watch out for if your quick hitch doesn't work quickly or smoothly or stops working altogether. It might be that the pumps, I suppose you'd get different. <laughs> suppose if that fills with grime, then you've got problems in the pump. Nip that up. And then I need a 22 to hold this in position to lock that off. So that's that little job done. I'll put this panel back on and we'll just check that when you curl the bucket now, the hitch unlocks. The quick little tip, might be common sense to folk, but when you're putting panels back on, 
just get all the bolts in first before you rattle them up because it's dead easy now just to rattle them in and then come around this side where you can't see see that these don't line up so might seem like common sense but i've seen people fighting on it so i've got a quick couple of releases you can hear by the beeping and if i curl the bucket lever in that now works as it should hold it over and then it stops beeping at me Good, right, I've just got the dash to set up now. It's got the right date in it, but um, if I'm the operator and I want to change the flow, it won't let me. Oh, I need to be in work mode. So if I'm in hammer mode now and I want to do that, it tells me to enter a password. So I need to knock that function off because I know the fellow that's getting it is an owner operator and he'll want to just be able to do it without phoning me for the password. So to do that, we need to go into the menu, press here. Then we need to scroll down to operator management. Select that. And then select the owner. And then we put in the factory password, which is one, 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 one. And then set owner lock. And we untick that box come out of there now so if I want to set the floor now it'll let me so that's like the factory password for these is 1111 so if I left it as it was and the owner put his hammer on and he wanted to turn the floor down he'd be met with that password and the password and he'd be on the phone to me what's the password and I have to tell him one 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 so I might as well just knock the function off for him finally before I get a copyright strike make sure the radio works that is one of the most important things I remember a machine going out at my old place it went all the way up to Edinburgh um, and it had another fault but the biggest problem with it was the radio wasn't working so <laughs> Aside from the fact that the machine was absolutely useless, um, the most important thing was the radio wasn't working. And that was about, that call came in at 3 o'clock on a Friday. So it was Muggins here that ended up going all the way up to Edinburgh at 3 o'clock on a Friday to sort the radio out and there was a hydraulic issue that basically the machine wouldn't move until you revved it all the way up and the rotate pipe work wasn't plumbed in right so all the pilot oil was going straight to the tank. True story. Right, um, I think it just needs washed now, doesn't it? <laughs> Tried everything else, everything else works. Yes, we'll go and wash it. Okay, so there's a lad just uh, washing his van at the moment, so I've jumped onto this one now. Um, remember it wouldn't start on the front. Well, I forgot to turn the isolator off when I finished with what I was doing. Fired up no bother. I fitted a new radio. Uh, make sure that works. Beautiful. I have completed the green beacon. Fantastic. I am just about to grease it. I've done my level checks. Um, get that one on there. That should work for offset shouldn't it that should well, it's on there is it oh <laughs> silly me don't miss thumb wheel stretch the arm out get a bit of grease around it and that'll be this one complete as well which is nice and we are done go and put this one on the wash and I'll wash the pair of the diggers off it is, what's the time, all the time, what's the time? It is 25 past four. So about 20 minutes on each digger and then it's home time. Oh, oh, oh. That'll be good, that'll be good. I'll be glad to get all these PDIs out the way. Oh, I should add as well, uh, this machine isn't getting a hydraulic hitch. 
it's not getting a hitch. Um, the customer's swapping the hitch off his old, he's got one of these already, um, and he's swapping the hitch off his machine onto this one. So it's an old machine, when it's traded in, we'll have a brand new hitch on it. So that'll be a steal to whoever buys that. Right, we'll stretch this arm out and kill up the pressure washer. So, it is 4.58. Perfect timing, perfect timing now. Give yourself a pat on the back. Go home and have a good weekend. I will, thanks. It's, uh, it's been a good day today, I've enjoyed it because I've got lots done. I feel like I've, I've done more today than I did yesterday and Wednesday, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, I like to be productive, I like a productive day. Um, so yeah, we'll round the video up at that. Next video will be out on Thursday, uh, no, Tuesday after you've watched this. Videos are normally every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Uh, but the last couple of weeks it's been a bit skewed because of just either lack of content or... What was the other reason? Maybe I was late back, maybe there was stuff going on at home that I needed to saw and then I couldn't be bothered to edit a video. Can't remember, but anyway. I'm going home for the weekend. Have a good Easter break and uh, we'll see you in the next one.